stage, Mr. Matthew Campbell. Well, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to him. My name is Matthew Campbell, and I'm based in the Smurfit Institute of Genetics in Trinity College. I'm a lecturer there, and I also run a research group there. But what I want to do this evening, because the theme is Expect the Unexpected, I want to, to give you a bit of a background to my own research career and what has got me to this stage. And also to, to give you an idea of, of what, I, what I do scientifically, the second half of my talk I'll, 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 I'll brief over the type of research that we do. So I want to take you back to 2002, so 14 years ago. I had just finished a degree in biochemistry in Ireland's second best university, <laughs> University College Dublin. And I was deciding what to do and both myself and my, my, my girlfriend at the time, we were deciding that we were going to possibly go and do PhDs. but. My girlfriend Sarah had decided that she was going to do a PhD with the shining light of, of research in Ireland, Professor Luke O'Neill, who's world famous. I wasn't as clever as my girlfriend and I still hadn't got a PhD offered to me, but I applied for a few of them and, and the idea was we would pack our bags and go to India and travel India for three months and in the hope that I'd eventually be offered one of these PhDs that I had interviewed for. So off we went and we flew into Bombay and we worked our way down to, to go and we ended up in a small place called Hampi, the, the, the southern part of India. And while in Hampi, I went off to the, the internet cafe one day to, to check my email. And this was the time of, of dial-up connection. People remember, some people here are far too young to remember dial-up connection, but this is where your mother would scream at the phone and she picked up the phone and heard static, she'd scream at you, get off that fucking internet! <laughs> this, is, this is the way our lives were back in the early 2000s. So I went into an internet cafe to check my email, I sat down and logged on. Ten minutes later I still wasn't connected to the email, but eventually I got there. And once I got onto my email, I, the first thing that was there was it was an offer of a PhD in the hallowed halls of Trinity College. This was, this was amazing, being offered a PhD. So, you know, both Sarah and myself were both were going back in September to PhDs. The issue then was I had to reply to accept this PhD, but replying to emails back then wasn't as easy. It took ages to reply and then you'd write the email and then the, the, the computer would crash or you'd lose the internet connection. So I said, what I'll do is I'll get to the next destination and then I'll reply to this email to this person in Trinity. So the next destination was a 36 hour train journey away in a small town called Pushkar in the Rajasthani desert. And so when we arrived in Pushkar, so to, to, to give you an idea of what Pushkar is like, Pushkar is, is a vegan city, it's a holy city in India. And believe it or not, they have eggless omelets and milkless milkshakes there. This is, this is the, the, the type of city it is. So Easter Sunday is a very sad day for children. <laughs> anyway, I hopped, skipped and jumped my, my, my way to the, the local internet cafe in Pushkar to, to log on and accept my PhD. So again, I went in and all these guys were hanging around and 10 minutes later, I eventually logged on. And there was an email from the, the person in Trinity saying, I'm sorry, I thought you weren't interested in the PhD. I've given it to someone else. Oh. And this was, you know, a, a young man as I was at the time. I walked out of there and life was just shit. You know, the world was spinning. And to add to the misery, this place, Pushkar, it has cows and pigs and sheep wandering the streets and they've shit all over the place. So basically I was standing there with nothing. I was going back in September to nothing and there was shit everywhere. <laughs> so to, to, to drown my sorrows, I went to a, to a, a restaurant but the place is, it's a, it's a dry city, it's a dry town, you can't even get a boo, any booze, you know? So, as I was talking to Sarah, we were, we were discussing what we were going to do, the, the, the guy from the restaurant company said, do you want to bang Lassie? And I said, excuse me? <laughs> this sounded like some sordid bestiality porno. And so, I said, bang Lassie? And he said, yeah, it's, it's this thing that we have in Pushkar. It's, it's a, the budding, the, the, a, a budding flower of a cannabis plant. If you take the leaves and put it into a milkless milkshake, it's called a bang Lassie. And we said, sure, why not? You know, it's, it's, uh, life can't get any more shit, you know? <laughs> so we shared a bang Lassie together. And as we were leaving the restaurant, it started to take effect. So we were walking along and as we saw shadows on the ground, we just assumed they were cows. So arm in arm, we would step over a cow or we'd step over a, a sheep <laughs> on the ground. We arrived back into the hotel and we were just lying on the bed and Sarah said, this is absolutely brilliant, this is great. And as she was saying that, I was going, oh yeah, this is brilliant, as the ceiling was in front of my head and the walls were undulating in and out. So what on earth does this have to do with science? Well, <laughs> it's, it's expect the unexpected. And unexpectedly, later on that summer, I was offered a PhD in, in, in University College Dublin. 
But the subject area of the PhD was so different. The subject area of the PhD was on a condition called age-related macular degeneration, or AMD for short. Some people might have heard of this. It actually affects one in 10 people. So one in 10 people here are actually going to get AMD. And smokers, 50% increased risk of getting AMD, and especially the smoke the Korean ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I, I did my entire PhD on, on, on AMD, and fast forward to 2010. What? Sorry, but I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's a form of blindness, age-related macular degeneration. It's, it's a form of central retinal blindness. So you can mimic it by taking two five-cent coins and putting them about maybe five centimeters away from your eye. That's the, the, what the vision that you have. You only have peripheral vision, so you, you lose all your central vision. So it's not like you can look around the, the, the vision that you've lost. So it affects the elderly. You know, it's one in two people over the age of 90 have AMD. One in four people over the age of 70 have AMD. But it will affect one in 10 of us during our lifetime because we're all living longer, you know? So if you fast forward to 2010, myself and Sarah, who was then my wife, actually, we, we expect the unexpected, yeah. we, we got married. We, we were on the 37 bus back to, to Castleknock, Blanchardstown, and we started talking about, about science, because Sarah is also a scientist, we talk a lot of science in our house. We started talking about this condition, age-related macular regeneration, you know, it's, it's a, a condition associated with aging and with the elderly, and as you age, you know, your immune system changes as well. So Sarah was an immunologist, and we started asking questions as to, you know, is the immune system possibly involved in AMD? And to cut a very, very long story short, what we actually discovered was that there's a molecule called interleukin-18, which is actually part of your immune system. It, it, it spikes when, you, when you've got an infection or something, IL-18 will spike. But if you take IL-18 and you inject it into the eye during the course of this condition, AMD, you can actually slow down the progression of AMD. So at the moment, what myself and Sarah are doing is we're, we're developing this as a therapy, as a new form of therapy for AMD, with the hope that in the next five to 10 years, we'll have a novel drug to treat people with AMD. And so to, 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 to the concept, the, the concept of expect the unexpected is something that in science, and me particularly, we, we embrace the unexpected and we try to control the unexpected. And obviously you can't control it, but if you keep making decisions and constantly, constantly keep making decisions, you should be able to direct the unexpected. And finally, I'd just like to say, because all comedians say this and I'm not a comedian, I've been Matthew Campbell, and thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matthew Campbell, everybody.